think of my computer. I've got like so many things. I use it for my studio. Oh, right. So <laughs> I just went, listen, I just unplugged everything and brought it in. Oh, okay. oh, thank you. Right. Hello, everyone. Oh, my God. We're just going to go straight. No more introductions because we're like an hour and a quarter late. But, yeah. oh, God, the opera. <laughs> I was going to wear mine, but that does not. Oh, I'll wear a different God. one. But, You're still wearing um, a good one. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. You know, like with that Candy Opera song and say, we'll get there in the end. And we did, yeah. didn't we? We got Honestly, there. We got there in the end. We so really we're live. Yeah, we're live. Yeah, hopefully people, um, I'm, I do apologize to everyone. So like waiting since two o'clock. I'm really, really sorry. But things like this happen. And, you know, we, we try the best. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, um, how are you? I'm fine, thank you very much. No apart stress from, at all. Apart from, <laughs> apart from the stress, I'm okay. How are yourself? You're okay, Anna? Yeah, yeah, I'm no, fine. Of course, well, course, course, I'm course. just so like really, really glad that you know you didn't give up on me. It was like, it was like, oh my no, we god. No, we had to get, we had to, we had to get there. We had to get there in the end. Yeah, we'll get there. Yeah, when we got there. Absolutely. In the end. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um. So. Right. Um, cool. Last time, last time I saw you was at the um, Hangar Hangar Thirty Four. You yeah, the really Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was such an awesome gig. So <laughs> it was. It was a good night, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Uh, how have you been? So how is so? Like, Christmas and New Year. Christmas is pro probably one of the best I've had. It was superb. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We, we all had a big, us, me, Linda, family, the kids. We all went out to the. And a really big scoff with the pictures and everything like that. It was a really good day. Oh, it's brilliant. You know, you, well, I'll say, I'll say Christmas. That was our Christmas thing. I know this, the, the pictures aren't open on a, on, a new, on, a, on a Christmas day. But we had a nice Christmas meal. But we also celebrated, I think, the next day off, just before it, we went to pictures. Yeah, so, yeah. Cool. But I had a lovely well, day. I had a lovely day. Are you back in Liverpool now, or are you still...? Yeah, yeah. that, that ended, to be honest with you, Anna, that ended. I was back home. June 2020. Oh, I see. Yeah, but the COVID and things weren't working out, you know, the way the way we were supposed to work out. And uh, yeah, I think it was the right yeah. choice. It was the right choice to come home then, you know. It was a bit of a, you know, things weren't, weren't good really in the world, you know, so. Yeah, yeah so, so well, well, Liverpool's... Well, yeah. one of the best cities because I was gonna say best yeah. city in the world, but there's Manchester as well. So, so <laughs> yeah, yeah, you gotta keep your options <laughs> open. <That's what> I... <laughs> yeah. Well, before we start, I just want to say I think it's Mal was got using the candy opera thing, and he yeah. was like, "At last, it just had to sleep." He said, "So, hello, oh, Mal. Was... <laughs> <laughs> I'm really sorry about this." And also, hello to Dubia. Um, who's in California? So say happy, happy 2022. We said so, he, and then he, Mal just confirmed that it was him. So, it's, so oh, good. Is, is Frank? Uh, Frank's been trying to get on it as well, on it. Yeah, because um, I, Frank was messaging me, and I said that yeah. I'm really sorry, but we're having a bit of a technical. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what he's doing now. I don't know if he even try and get on, but yeah, yeah. he was having a bit of difficulty. We all were. We all were. Yeah. And there's also another um, Graham. Uh, he was all like, I think he was getting a bit frustrated because it's you know, after two o'clock and we're still not yeah. live. But hopefully, he'll still be able to sort of like join us later. Oh, and, yeah. oh yeah. Yeah. Frank just said, hello, plums. <laughs> hello, plums. Yeah. Well, I, I, I will see what I say to him. Okay. Because we're on, you know, we're live on here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So much information. <laughs> so, um, welcome to Ask the Drummer. Uh, episode 25 is all about you, Alan yeah. Curry. So, okay. um, we're going to start, of course, from the very beginning. So, you, you were mm. born in, in Liverpool, right? Yeah, that's right, so, yeah. Yeah, so, um, how was it, so, like, how was it like for you as, well, like, as a kid growing up in Liverpool? Well, from what I can remember, because <laughs> it was a long time ago, it was great. You know what I mean? It was it was good. It was it's of course it's much different now because it's a different generation uh, to what we were. You know, uh, without going into all, I'm an old person. You know, <laughs> not getting too deep into that how old I am. But you know, 
you know, the last thing you want to do is stay in the house when you were a kid. You were always out playing football or tennis or whatever. You know, where it was brilliant. It was television. There were only three channels: BBC One, yeah. BBC Two, and ITV, and that was it. No internet, no nothing like that. No mobile phones. So it was it was different. So you, you used to love going out and having a laugh, you know, with your mates. You know, yeah. yeah. The summer was like six weeks, seven, whatever it was off school was like bliss. It's brilliant, you know what I mean? But yeah, so it was different then. We're always out as a kid. I was always out. It's brilliant. And what was the music scene like when you were... Because uh... you can't, well, you're not that old. <laughs> well, you know, well, I'm 15. I'm 59 now, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm going to be 60 next year. Well, so that's, that's be getting me I'm going to get a bus pass soon. You know, <laughs> yeah. There'll be a day when I won't be able to lift any drumsticks. But uh, no, well, it depends. Are you talking about me... As a kid or as a teenager? Well, um, kid, teenager. If so I was, like, did I you was, go to lots of gigs and stuff? No, 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 not unlike that. No, I didn't really go to gigs till a bit later on, to be honest with you. Um, no, I, I probably didn't start doing that till I was about 17, 18. Right. I started going to gigs. Anything yeah, before yeah. that, you know, uh, no, I didn't really go to, you know, I was, whether that's at least started or not, I don't know. Um, but yeah, I, I did got start going. I used to go to a lot of gigs with Frank. You know, used to go and watch the yeah. Skids or the Ramones or whatever, whoever. Or Joey Musker would get us into the, the Royal Court for nothing or something like that. You know what I mean? Years ago. Yeah, yeah. But uh, anything before sort of 17, I think, maybe even 18, I, I don't think. I was into music. Yeah. You know, I was getting into the jam and things like that. And yeah, yeah. Whatever. That, that was sort of brought to my attention when I was that age. But. I never really went to gigs now till, till probably about 18, maybe 19, something like that. Right. Well, this being asked the drummer, um, how did you get into drumming? But before you answer that, uh, yeah. Mal just said the only, the only, hold on, yeah. the only drumsticks he knows are covered in batter. Are covered in what? <laughs> covered in batter. <laughs> the only drumsticks. <laughs> 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 I'm sorry. Wait. <laughs> He's a cheeky is, there any, is there any way of switching them off? <laughs> Easy as well. Well, it shows the button you can just like click. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And also, um, Trevor Palmer has, um, hello, he's joined us live. And, nice, um, Trevor. Uh, Dubia said they can't wait to visit Liverpool for Candy Opera Awards once and other. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, yeah. so. So how did you get into drumming? Uh, well, I don't want to say it's by accident. I don't know. It's uh, uh, well, As a kid, I didn't really think I was going to play the drums. I used to play, uh, when because I, I got brought up by my grand, grandmother mm -hmm. and all their sons, who were my uncles, of course, So and they were all into music. They used to, every Sunday, well, nearly every day, but mostly Sundays, every morning I used to wake up to them playing the guitar to either... Elvis or Django Reinhardt, Stephen Grappelli and all that, you know, that type of thing. So I woke up in that environment, uh, or I was born in that environment, but also I listened to a lot of it as well. And it, probably around about 15 or 16, I used to have these big pink pillars that my grandma bought. They were massive, and I used to play on them with my hands, hit them. <laughs> I don't know what I was doing. Didn't think, yes, I'm going to be a drummer. You know, uh, up yeah. until my next-door neighbour, uh, but four doors where Paddy he bought a keyboard, a Yamaha keyboard, and wanted to play in a band. And, and he was the first person to buy me a set of drums for about twenty-five pounds or something like that. Why don't you? Really? My dad, my, my dad was a keyboard player. He used to play the Hammond's organ, and he was a good drummer. Yeah, okay. But he was mostly a keyboard player. And um, but it it wasn't him. It wasn't me, dad or not. And I said, get into drums. It was more me, me, Paddy. You got me a set because I used to play with my hands. So he just uh, bought you a, a, a drum kit? It, yeah, it, it, honestly, God, it, it, 25 quid, it's got, that's got to be some drum kit, doesn't it, for 25 pounds. <laughs> but is that... Think, yeah. not like it's it's like, like buying a car with no wheels. <laughs> that's, how, that's, how, that's what it was like. Do you know what I mean? But it was... Uh, I, I started playing that in the bedroom, of course. Like, it was a little bit loud. My grandma said, uh, get it out now. <laughs> and then, then all of a sudden... You know, I met Frank, who only lived at the top of our road. That's yeah, how we yeah. all were. I mean, 
he was literally about 10 doors away right uh, I didn't really know I knew of him but I didn't really know him that well until he said to me I play the bass do you fancy starting a band and then me Frank and Paddy we made yeah. all started this band uh, we used to play like a youth center just playing like jam covers badly uh -huh. you know what I mean and that's <laughs> how it started at that age. I was only about maybe I was probably about 18 maybe or something like that maybe 17 yeah. and a half 18 can't remember the exact age it's going to be round about that maybe 17 18 and then me and Frank started playing together and Frank used to write songs yeah did you have a name for your band uh, I think we were called the Doubters. The Doubters, wow. The Doubters, I think Frank. Yeah, I think we were anyway. I mean, Frank, if Frank's listening, he can maybe put a comment in to say if that's right. But Frank used to write. Frank used to write the songs. You know what I mean? So Frank was a, a really a, a songwriter when he was a young. Songwriter, wow. Yeah, and then after that, he he, he was crap. He couldn't he, <laughs> he he couldn't write his name after that. Frank, you know what I mean? Let alone write his song. He said, he said his answer, Rufin. You know what I mean? That was it. <laughs> so that was, that, that was that to your first band, The Doubters. I think we were called, I'm sure we were called The Doubters. Or I'm, I'm absolutely positive. Yeah, yeah, we were called The Doubters. Um, did you go for, did you have any drumming lessons so that you can actually No, no never you had just a drum lesson. Just, yeah. just went with it, just went with it. And at least as you go along, you know. Listen to your favorites. Yeah. So I was trying to copy them, you know. So uh, yeah, that that was no. Still haven't had no lessons. Probably a lot of people will say I need them, but you know, <laughs> I, I I haven't taken no lessons ever since. Well, so well, sort of gone with it. Mal said that you're still using that twenty five pound drum kit. <laughs> it is, yeah. The way thing is, yeah. The way thing we drum kits have got that's Frank's. <laughs> yeah. Everything's Frank's. Everything we own in the band is Frank's. <laughs> he's like he's like he's like a he's like yeah he's like a, a he's he's got everything in his house he's like a he's like a music shop Frank you know he's got everything in his house you know what I mean yeah, I will yeah. pay for them drums sell Frank if he's I will pay for them drums one day you know? <laughs> well yeah. I just want to say yeah I just want to say hello to my baba she's listening hello my baba so it's like that's Adele and uh, Monty Monty Mendigoria who's got the it's all about new wave he's joined us live yeah. so hi Monty he's in Manila at the moment so um yeah so you were in the band with Frank so yeah. called the Doubters and then you became coming Tokyo or yeah, that's how right did, how, that, how did that, that happen then I'll try. Frank's usually the memory man around him. Frank knows everything. But from what I can gather, we, we ended up meeting Phil Wiley. I don't know whether it was through football or something like that, but I think Frank knew more. Um, again, Phil Wiley, this is how close we all are. Phil Wiley lived over the field at the back of ours. It's about maybe a six-minute walk to, to Phil Wiley's and Pete Wiley's. So wow. we got to know Phil, Phil joined the band straight away, and then that's our form. So it was just the three of us, really. Paddy, yeah. we keep all playing. Mate. He, he, he got off because um, he couldn't. He didn't know many sounds. He used to use the the same sound for every song. Uh, but yeah, anyway, so he, he started, it started off as a, a three piece band. So it's you, Phil Wiley, and Frank. Yeah, it was three piece oh. and. Uh, for the for the life of me, I don't think we played live early days as a three piece. I I, uh, I can't even. You know what? This is how bad my memory is. I can't even remember rehearsing. You know that <laughs> as a three piece. I just remember us looking for a keyboard player. Yeah, but who came up, who came up with the, with the band name though? Come in Tokyo and why is it T, T O K I O? <laughs> yeah, well, I I I don't know why the that. The word changing on it, yeah, the lettering changing, why it's just not spelt like as in come as in Tokyo with a Y O. Uh, but uh, I, I, you know what? I don't. I think this. I don't think I can tell the story. It's, it's a, you know, it's a little bit you know under the table, so I can't tell the story. What I would tell oh. you. But it's to do with the radio station, uh, uh, and it was to do with the. I, I think I can't remember. If it was off a film or something like that. Someone was trying to get through to, to Tokyo, and they were going come in Tokyo. Come in Tokyo, oh. and oh, I don't. Right. I think it was a film reference or something like that. Um, and Phil Wiley was the one who came up with it. 
Oh, I see. Yeah. yeah so it's it's stuck, you know. Um, that that's stuck uh, again. I can't remember when we actually made that decision or Phil made that decision to to bring the name in. But yeah, I I, I remember I remember the name coming into the band and Phil Wilder said, "Why don't we use that?" We said, "Okay, we'll just change the letter to K I O instead of Y O." Oh, you know. Really? Well, yeah, I was so, yeah. well, I was googling last night, and actually, there's another band called Come in Tokyo, but with a proper so like T O K Y O. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, when, I think system. it was formed in 2006 or something. So, um, so it's definitely so it's a right, new yeah. so like a new band called Come in Tokyo. So I'm just sort of like wondering, yeah. I wonder if they've heard of the other Come in Tokyo, which was you know. I was lucky for them because we we could have sued them. You know what I mean. We got a- <laughs> Got a few million out of them, you know what I mean? Yeah. I, to be honest with you, they, and I know I haven't heard of them. I haven't heard of that band, no. I haven't heard yeah. of them. No. Well, Frank, so like, it had something to do, but I'm not going to say it. <laughs> I'm just sort of like, you can sort of like read it later. But, anyways. Um, okay. So, <laughs> Honestly. So, <laughs> so, coming to Tokyo, um, you never released. An, uh, a single or no. an album, but you did Absolutely. so like three John Peel sessions. Yeah, we did. Yeah, the first one being a Made of Ale, which was basically, I think, the really one that launched the band uh, yeah. into that sort of underground, you know, the biggest band not to be signed sort of thing, you know, at that time. Uh, yeah, when we did the first Peel session, I think it was 82. Uh, on the night that it got broadcast, um, John Peel actually did his first Top of the Pops as well. And I think it might have yeah. been with Janice Long in 82. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But I, I, I remember doing the gig. I remember, sorry, the gig. Sorry, I remember going down doing the session yeah. in Made Vale in London. Uh, it was yeah. an eye opener. It was a real, eye, you know, big, massive studio. It's something that we've never seen before, you know. We, yeah. We, we we did our, our demo on a little what is it maybe eight track I think maybe even a little sixteen track in Liverpool and uh, <clears throat> of course we had the keyboard player in then called John Jenkins yeah, and he was the one, yeah he's the one that set all that up really you know he was the one that did everything all everything that needed to be done John Jenkins was really good at all that he was great at getting in touch with people uh, when we finally went down and did the session. It was just a great time, but we didn't know when it was going to get broadcast until I, uh, uh, right, yeah, I, was, yeah. I was playing tennis in the park and Frank ran over to the to the park to to grab hold of me and say, "We're on tonight. We're on tonight at ten o'clock." I said, "No way!" Like that, and, and, and <laughs> you know, we all listened to John Peel. And I used to go when I used to go over at ten o'clock. I'd be in bed listening to John Peel or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So it was you know wasn't because it was not to do with us having a broadcast. We all listened to John Peel because that's where the music was, you know. Yeah. Uh, we did all like the Cure and maybe the Bunnymen sessions. Maybe Frankie goes to Hollywood in the early days before they were signed and all that, you know. Yeah. And um, yes, yeah, so it got broadcast that night. I can't remember what what day or nothing like that, but when it was broadcast, I was so excited and I listened to it. And yeah. John John Peel was excited at the end of it and all that, you know. And then from that day on, the next day, the phone calls didn't stop. From all the record companies, wow! You know, all, yeah, all the majors ringing. Maybe the, the yeah. next two days, something like that. And of course, because we didn't have the experience of how to handle that. Uh, didn't you have a manager? Or it, that's it. We didn't have a manager. It was just basically John Jenkins doing all the, uh, you know, yeah, all the you know posting things and all the letter whatever he needed to do. You know, he, he yeah, did all yeah. like. He was like the manager, but he wasn't a manager. You know, he was just, he didn't, he was just doing it for the sake of doing it. Yeah. But I think, you know, from my mind, Frank might know a bit more, but from what I remember, we would, we weren't experienced there. You know, if we would have had a manager or if we would have had a different way of approaching it, we, we could have been signed probably in the next few weeks after that, you know, because record companies then were looking for the next big thing. They just didn't want to miss out. That's the way it was, and through John Peel, we had that opportunity, but we unfortunately we didn't take it. We did a couple oh, of wrong no. moves, you know, playing live and things like yeah. that. And when they asked for like, have you got any new songs? You, you go up and do some new songs, and they're not as good as what the session was. 
yeah, that we yeah. did originally, and it, you know, because that, that session was quite raw. It was, it was, it was like a better version. It says rock explodes. Well, uh, for anyone, for anyone who doesn't know it yet, yeah, it's on YouTube. Yeah, so, all the songs, um, you can so, yeah. check it out. Yeah, the John Peel session uh, with yeah, the Tommy first session. But the other sessions were good. Go ahead, sorry, Anna. Go ahead. Yeah, um, there have been sort of like releases like 12 inch singles or, or the John Peel session things. How come yours didn't get a uh, release or wasn't so? I, I have no idea. I'm sorry. <laughs> I just don't know. I did, after about 84, 85, I think when the band split up, so I didn't really take no more interest in coming to Tokyo. You know, uh, I haven't seen Phil yeah. Wiley since then. I haven't seen Phil Wiley since about 85. Maybe really, 86. yeah, yeah, yeah. Is he I, still I, I, he's Is still he's going. Still I think, he, yeah, I think he lives over the water, uh, over the Mersey. I think he lives in Brighton or somewhere like that. Or Frank, Frank will know more than me. Frank will know more because yeah. he's, he's more in contact. But I've been in touch with Phil through uh, you know, like a Facebook many years it's ago, social, and, yeah, social media, social media. Yeah. But uh, as, as opposed to like face to face, no, I haven't really, I haven't seen him since. Right. Well, this I found while I was sort of like searching for for you, of course, mm. Alan Curry. Um, so it says that you did your um, first gig at a ministry party. And yeah. apparently, according to this article, I think this was written by John Jenkins. Yeah. Um, yeah. Apparently, two members of you two yeah. came to see you at yeah. that gig. Was it well, one? almost did. Everyone was there. Uh, no, I don't think it was Bono. I think it might it, that might have been Clayton. And um oh god, I've, the bass player's name totally Adam Clayton. And who's the bass player for you two? Can't even remember. That's weird, isn't it? Anyway, I think it was the bass player and drummer. Oh, the edge. I you mean the edge? No, he's the guitarist. Uh, Adam I'm Clayton. Sure. Or, Adam, um, Adam Clayton's Mullen. the drummer. Adam Clayton yeah, is the, no Larry think, Mullen is the drummer. Larry Mullen, sorry, Larry Mullen and, Cl and Clayton is the Adam bass player. Clayton, is yeah. yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah, the bass player is Adam Clayton. Yeah, sure it was that. I I don't remember seeing Bono, but again, Frank, he's the one who's got like that mind where he doesn't Frank forget knows nothing. More. He just knows more than me. But not only that, though. I mean, McCulloch was there. I think members of the stage was Pete Pete Wiley. Wiley. everyone was there. Yeah, when we finished that gig, I think we, we had, a, I can't remember how many songs, say we had about eight, nine songs, maybe, or something like that. Um, yeah. That's well, John, step, John Jen probably, sorry, John, John yeah. Jenkins said that one of the songs was Some Say, which is like a war, mm. a war song. Now, now <laughs> that you've mentioned that, now that you've mentioned that, yeah, I remember it now, yeah. Probably Some Say played badly, you know, but it, yes, yeah, Some Say, which is off the NARPU. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why, why, you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, I think we did, yeah, some say we did do that. It, but that set was probably, say, about a 40-minute set. It, it, it must have felt like it must have lasted about 20 minutes because I was, the speed with which we played those songs because of nerves. I was actually sick after that gig. I puked up. Really? Yeah, yeah, oh. proper. But yeah. It, must be, it must be so, like, a bit, for the fans, it must be a bit confusing doing a Pit Wiley song. And Phil yeah. Wiley is it? <laughs> so it's yeah, so I know. <laughs> I know it, it is a bit mad. Well, there was always a thing with them too. You see, I, I, I think yeah. you know we had a song called a. Uh, I think it was actually called "Come in Tokyo." I think the song was called "Come in Tokyo." Uh, yeah. and or "Living in the Shadows" or something like that, where Phil Wiley spoke about living in the shadow of Pete Wiley. You know, it was it was on the first Peel session. Oh, so right, yeah, was, yeah. Yeah, because yeah. we had a sort of similar sound. You know, where Phil Wiley used a, 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 I think he used a Telecaster guitar. He used a Vox amp, which was what Pete Wiley used as well. You know, that lots of treble and lots of mm. power. And, and it, so we, we did use that. You know, it, it becomes prominent more in the first Peel session. And basically, we we're sort of maybe, if you like, copying what Pete Wiley done as well, you know. But... We also had an edge of teardrops behind it as well. It was that yeah. Liverpool sound, you know, it was that Liverpool sound. It was raw. It was brilliant. It was a great first session, you know what I mean? Um, but, yeah, at that gig, yeah, loads of people were there. You know, it was quite packed. It wasn't just us on. I think there was a couple of other bands. Yeah. You know, it wasn't just for us. I think a few more bands went on. But, 
I guess my memory's not so good. Well, well, Frank Frank said that it was actually Bono and Adam Clayton. So Bono was, was Bo- there. Oh, so, yeah. Well, I stand corrected. Yeah, people I stand corrected. Brought them back from the was Royal it? Court gig, so so it Is was Bono. It was? Yeah, All so right, Bono yeah. thought you played. it. <laughs> yeah, Bono. Yeah. I thought yeah. he'd asked me to join the band, but I don't think he did. <laughs> I would have said um, no. I would have said no. You go nowhere. Yeah, good. Yeah. Well, um, I've, I've heard that it's actually um, you know, you got tired of so like, or maybe Phil Wiley got tired of being just was brother or something like that. Mm. And, you know, because it's always been sort of like compared with Pete Wiley, wasn't it? Because he was the first one to sort of like. <laughs> yeah, I remember. The, I, I remember the gig we done. It might have been. Sorry, your earplugs are fell. Can you still hear me? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. fine. Yeah, yeah. it was a, 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 the very first gig we done out live, not in the ministry, but out live in the town centre. Uh, was in a place called Kirkland's upstairs in Kirkland's. Oh, right, yeah. Kirkland's, yeah. Kirkland's is still there. It was called the Baltimore Rooms. And we were we were we played live, and the tickets that John that John Jenkins produced had come in Tokyo underneath. It said "Son of War," <laughs> <laughs> which at the time we were like, I think me and Frank were going, "I don't believe what's going on here, Son of War." You, what are you doing? But what it you know it, it did create a big buzz. You know, it, you know it was packed. You know, and um, yeah, and yeah. the the band they were supporting us were called Hinterland. And their drummer, I think, is a oh my god, he plays for the farm. Bob, I can't, Bob, is it? Yeah, the, the, the farm's drummer, anyway. Uh, oh, the farm, Roy, yeah, Roy, Roy, Roy Bolter, yeah, yeah, yeah. Roy, Roy, yeah. Roy yeah. sorry, I just name just went amiss. Uh, Roy Bolter, <laughs> he, he was playing drums for Hinterland then when we, we played our oh, first really? game, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, so you know, um. Those those early days, you know, the son of war thing and all that, it was hard to get away from really when you're Pete Wiley's brother. You know, uh, <laughs> yes. you know. So yeah. by the time the second session came, I think it was a I think it was a kid Jensen kid Jensen session. Yeah, it wasn't was in, it was in yeah. it was in Manchester, not London, so it wasn't as not not wrong with Manchester. I'm just saying it was great going to London, you know, the big studio was made of ale. Uh, yeah, it, was, yeah. it, was, it was like a, a, a really it was a smaller version of, you know, it was like a, a small oh, version. Really? It wasn't as good, you know what I mean? It, it could have been anywhere, but it just it was in Manchester. But that <laughs> session, it, it, I think what Phil Wiley sort of changed the, the, the style. We had a saxophone player, keyboards, a bit, a bit more. It was just turning into like, it Is was it still like good, a, good yeah, songs. Thing. <laughs> yeah, if, if, you, if you want to put it like that, like more like, a, yeah, more <laughs> mature. Uh, for much well, you're listening, oh, yeah, <laughs> you know, this um, raw punk thing, it's sophisticated. It, that, <laughs> That's what people, <laughs> it was. No, I, I, this is what I thought and what Frank thought. I, I just thought we drifted away from that raw edge that we had. You know, it, yeah. songs were getting the, you know, they were, they were proper songs. I don't know if you, if, if that means anything. They were like, you know, <laughs> with great arrangements and with you know, and proper or, arrangements, yeah, <laughs> yeah, proper arrangements or something like that. They just did, they just. For me, just didn't have that energy that they had on those first four songs that we done. But that's the way it happens. It is the way it goes. Yeah. Well, Frank said Jacob said hello, and can he oh. have his stick back? <laughs> Did <laughs> he? For his sticks. <laughs> yeah. Hello, uh, Jacob. <laughs> yeah. Tell Jake. Tell Jacob I'm really, really sorry, but he's not getting them back. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, anyways, um, you've got. Loads, of, you've got loads of sort of like coming Tokyo songs and stuff. Are you not sort of like thinking of doing similar to what Candy Opera did, which is like a retrospective album? Do you know, like maybe, for coming maybe song, no. sort of like get it out there, release it out there. And no, uh, for me, that ship sailed now. Uh, and, uh, I think that's gone now. Yeah. Uh, it, it for me, that went easy. I mean, no. I mean, no. for John, for John Jenkins, he'd be the type of guy who'd do something, he'd release something, or he'd, he'd get something going, because that's what John Jenkins does. He's good at things like that. But for me, yeah. doesn't it? It does. I know it sounds a bit like I should be really up for it, but I'm not really bothered. It would be you, know, good uh, this, you know, get new fans. <laughs> I mean, yeah, well, I don't know. I, I don't. You know, it's one of them, and I, I, I don't. 
I don't know. It's just I'd rather just I, I'm I'm enjoying it. You know the candy opera stuff. The you candy know, because, opera, yeah, of course, yeah. You know, yeah. I really do that to do something else. I'll be like, oh, God, you know what I mean? Yeah, maybe, maybe <laughs> not. And and plus the fact Phil Wiley wouldn't as well because Phil Wiley's out the game now, so he doesn't really. Do yeah. all. I'm, I'm not saying I'm speaking for him for for, for what I gather. I don't think he's he's he's, he's into doing anything. Yeah, he's not up for that. But you know, yeah, for me, yeah. unfortunately, I, I I think that comment <laughs> that's like that comment. Has actually passed our eight and gone wherever you know what I mean. <laughs> well, yeah. so after coming Tokyo, what was yeah. your next fan? Wow, was it, was it Candy she... Opera straight away, or was um, or candy <laughs> it was? Yeah, I think it was. It was. I'm sure it was Candy Opera. Yeah, I think it was Candy yeah. Opera. Yeah, it was. Sorry, these keep on falling out because I've got massive ears. Yeah, it it, it was Candy Opera. It was can. I'm sure it was yeah. Candy Opera. Yeah. I, oh no, it wasn't. No, no. No, oh, no. I I have to stop there. Yeah. No, it was a it was a band called the European Boys. The European that, Boys. Absolutely, Whoa. you've never heard of them, have you? Yeah. No, yeah, you no, never. no. It didn't come up in the song like the one. No, that no. It, it, yeah, it was the Euro, European Boys. There you go. Probably Frank will know all this more than me. Uh, yeah, so that was, was a band Frank called... also in that band. No, 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 no. Oh, Frank, okay. uh, not on to do. Frank went on to do his own thing. Now I think. Frank played yeah. with, with other bands as well. But yeah, I joined a band called the uh, European Boys. Uh it was a five piece. Right. And it was it was yeah, we had a we had what you thought was trendy, there was a gay singer. He was gay, but he was out there big time, you know what I mean? He was he he loved being the front guy, he was he yeah, was yeah. millions, you know what I mean? He was a great uh, Jerry Butler, he was superb, but he was just he was a he was a good character to have. I mean, you always think, oh, you, you could get somewhere with a character like that, you know, like Holly Johnson or something like that from Frankie's. Yeah, uh, that was sort or of the like thing. You know, Dead or Alive or something. Dead or Alive, and, yeah, and, and Pete Burns, like he, he, yeah. yeah, Erasure or something like that. Yeah, uh, yeah. And it, but I, I just the thing is, the rest of us didn't look good, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and it, you know, a lot of it was based on image in those eighties. You know, it was based on image. You know. <laughs> You look at all your bunny men, the air cut one hundred. We were like we were like a cabaret band from Norwich. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Apart from the lead singer, we just we just didn't look good at all. You know what I mean? We had we had a guitarist who looked like Bob Hoskins. You know, <laughs> the actor. You know. God. He'd have me on the drums. He used to call me he used to call because I look like Holly Johnson, they called me Bolly Johnson. You know what I mean? So and then we had a bass player who was about six foot seven. It just didn't bode well, and we had a a keyboard player who looked like Lurch from a. <laughs> what was that? Can't remember that. A the monsters was it? Yeah. You know. So you'd have to say to yourself, you go, "I like the songs are good, but I don't think the band is, looks that good." Do you know what I mean? It looked a bit wibbly wobbly. It's only the lead singer who looked any good. Anyway, that that band just it happened. We had a couple of uh, demos. We had a bit yeah. of interest from Jeff Chegwin, who was Keith Chegwin's brother, who worked for RCA Records. But we we, we didn't look good. We, we were in a good looking band, you know what I mean? It's only yeah. me. It's only me that's good looking. Of course. You know, of course. Yeah, only me. I'm probably the, the lead singer. The rest, I didn't stand a chance. <laughs> and, um, and that's why you joined Candy Opera then. So it's like, yeah, I'm no, no, not because they, not, not because like, they were good looking. No, good, not yeah. like that. no, no, <laughs> no, no, yeah. Again, that European boys, that that ship sailed. That 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 we could only get so far with that, and it was never going to happen. So I decided yeah. to go, and then yeah, and then I didn't really drum much. If if I can remember, I used to work in a place called Rudy's, which was like a music bar, and it, all the bands used to play there. Everyone played there. In that sort of 84, maybe 85, maybe 86 to about 90, 91 or something like that. It was a great place yeah. to be. You could go on your own and you'd meet all your mates. You'd meet bands, people that you knew there. Well, I used to work there as a barman as well. I used to work behind the bar. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah, and watch yeah. the bands and all that. And because I was I was known anyway, everyone knew me, you know, from, from being in a band. And Mal used to go with Brian to Rudy's. Uh, I, I used to work behind a bar. I, I used to save Mal, but you know we didn't know each other. I think yeah. Mal might have knew of me, 
but he wasn't looking for anyone in particular. He just knew of me, you know what I mean? And yeah. I, I, I knew Mal, but didn't know him as a friend or the way I do now. And um, I think we ended up, we used to play chess, me and Mal in Rudy. We used to play chess. Can okay, you believe that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's just, that's not rock and roll at all, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Just, yeah. I, I think well can the opera by this stage i think they've so like gone through so many different lineups, lineups. yeah yeah from about and, 83 yeah. wasn't it something like that onwards yeah because yeah. it was all yeah, like well. thinking I, I was all like thinking is it so like um the equivalent to so like the fall that there's so many members but yeah. only mal is the um is the mm. key so like a uh, member yeah. of candy opera so he's the one yeah. who's always been so it's always been there um, yeah he's been the so, most. yeah so um candy opera did, yeah. like coming tokyo did didn't really release until of course 2018 they didn't release any record no. or anything but, the audio um, was devils <laughs> but i've um seen that there's this honeysuckle rose cassette has, is that, okay. Um, and it's got two songs in it, like with "Yesterday in All the Right Places" and "Whip Crack Away." So has it has it ever been released as a cassette tape, or was it just a demo? No. Or... As, as far as I know, and I, you know, I have no mouth since then. I don't remember us releasing anything at all. Yeah. Uh, no, nothing like that. Unless Mal knows something that I don't know. I I don't remember us releasing anything the 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 strength was that demo they done over yeah. the water and station house um and funny enough their bass player at that time wasn't frank their bass player was the bass player of the european boys the band i was in beforehand yeah <laughs> yeah which is a mad Lurch. thing yes what, <laughs> did, you, yeah. did you just say Lurch? Lurch was, <laughs> no not Lurch. Lurch was the keyboard player oh no just the keyboard player no. Dave, Dave was just about six foot. He was about six foot twenty. He was up here. Oh, right. You know what I mean? And uh, and he was a slap bass. He used to play loads of slap bass and things like that. And, oh, um, right. He was the bass player. And uh, when I went to audition, because uh, I think Mal ended up asking me. I don't think they wanted to ask me in the first place because they thought I was a bit of a thug. I don't know where that comes from. Um, but they actually, I got in, I got into the band like that, and then I was rehearsing. There's Dave playing on bass while I'm rehearsing these songs that I listen to off off the off the cassette demo, and then uh, that's when they, they said, "Yeah, you're in the band." I said, "Well, to be honest with you, I can't really play with Dave, who was the bass player of the European Boys." I said, "Is there any chance of me getting Frank in?" Uh, and is, of is course, this yeah, Dave, Dave Wiggins, Dave Morant. Dave Moran. Oh, I, he, like, yeah, I think yeah, he's. Yeah. I, I think he's head. <laughs> to believe this, he's head of PlayStation now. Uh, PlayStation Music for Sony. Dave Morant, yeah. What? So I can't. I can't slag him off too much in case he's listening, and I can get a job. With him. <laughs> yeah. Or in I've case he's loved, it on YouTube or yeah. something. Like that. I've always loved Dave Morant. He's always been a great bass player, <laughs> and I never want him to leave Candy Opera. I want to put that now. I never want to. I never want to Franken. I never want to. Frank, I always want the Dave to play bass. If he's listening, to him. if he's not, then I always want to Franken. <laughs> well, we'll no, talk about. That's what I want. Well, we'll talk about Candy Opera, which is so like the return of Candy Opera in twenty eighteen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's that's what's late, later on. But we'll have to sort of continue with your drumming career first. Yeah, I remember so that. Yeah. After after that Candy Opera one, yeah. you were in a band called Thirty Five Summers. I was, uh, but before that, yeah, I was actually. Yeah, I'm trying to remember now. Yeah, I, we sort of split up Candy Opera. We went, went our separate ways. Yeah. Again, I felt like that, that ship has sort of sailed and we were looking for something different. So I decided to leave and I think the, the band disbanded or carried on without me for a bit. But anyway, so again, I didn't really do much drumming after that. Uh, yeah. Even though I was a drummer, I, I wasn't like a person who'd go like, right, what are we going to look for now? And I'll go looking for bands or I'll be a session drummer. I, I just didn't have that drive in me for it. I just played for the bands. And then if that didn't happen, I'd go back to work or I'll just carry on with my life. And it wasn't until about a, a, a couple of months after that when I, I got a, a phone call off of Steve Kinraid, who was the manager of 35 Summers then. Um, 
through a, 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 a through a guy called Andy Doherty, who uh, who is owner of Ad Lib Audio. They did all the big speakers for all the big bands, you know, on tour. All right, okay. And, and it was Andy from Ad Lib that said Alan Curry's free. Have you tried Alan Curry? Because they were looking for a new drummer. And then that happens. I got the call, and it was paid work as well because they were signed to RCA Records at the time. 35 yeah. summers but, yeah, but unfortunately yeah. <laughs> unfortunately it was the last six months six or seven months before they got dropped so i spent six or seven months with with fish monkey man which is Dave pitchilingi and all that you know yeah um, well, that's very interesting because now that you mentioned so like david pitchilingi he's the yeah. one who owns modern sky records right yeah and uh and yeah that's right sound city as well in Sound City, and he's the one he's, releasing the new McHead album. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, he's the he's the CEO, yeah. isn't he? CEO he is. He, he's the main guy. Like, yeah, well, he's been doing things like that for years, Dave. Yeah, he's okay. always had he's always had his fingers in pies with, with regards to music, even in the days of Thirty Five Summers. Um, yeah. So I, I presume his life was mapped out in, in in that direction always, you know, and he's done really well. Well, talk about so sort of like Mick Head. You've always Candy Opera has always got this connection with Mick Head and the Pale Fountains, mm. right? So, yeah. what what was it like around that time when you know Do you, you mean, were all so a... like young, Candy Opera and the Pale Fountains, so like the same? Uh, what's it called? Is it Pythian? Well, Pythian Estate or something? Is that what it's called? Where Pythian. You're all... Fithian, Fithian. Oh, really? It's Kensington. Well, yeah, Kenny, well, yeah that's right. To be honest with you, I'm, I'm probably not the guy to talk about that. The reason why would I put the damper on it? Because I wasn't in the band then. With me and Frank didn't join till about 88, 89. Right, so yeah, yeah. All that pale fountain stuff around about 82, 83, 84, 85. That was, I think Ken was in the band then as well. Yeah, and, and also Ken's Ian got Haskell, his links with Mick Head, and he's got he's got his links with me, Mick Head anyway, hasn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and things like yeah. that. So that was the connection then, which which Mal would know absolutely far more than me. <laughs> you know, yeah. So and I wasn't really, I didn't know much about that. I was I I had, I had my own thing with coming Tokyo then or whatever. So I was doing something else. So I wasn't in that sort of a uh, that. Whatever it was called, genre or music, what they were doing—that was like a different thing to it's me. Different, you know what I mean? All right, yeah. It was yeah, a different yeah. world, but I, I know the Paleys were superb anyway. But I, I didn't—I oh, yeah. I knew, I knew of Candy Opera, but I wasn't a, a major follower of Candy Opera. Then, do you know what I mean? Um, yeah. but, well, the Pearl Fountains—they're very big in the Philippines, so. Party, like, yeah, of course, yeah. yeah. Very well, big. Yeah. <laughs> of it's not all, all, the, all the music from the eighties, like is 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 quite big there, you know. Also yeah. with the the wild swans, the and wild the swans. Yeah, I was going to say yeah, Paul. Paul Gibson, all that, yeah, yeah. Not so, that. so there's, there's always a chance for us. Yeah. yeah. So this um 35 summers, I, I found out that you were actually supporting. Uh, you supported EMF and Northside. Yeah, that's, that's right. Like, yeah. Th these yeah, are like very unbelievable. Well, yeah, that's like it, dancey. Um, you know, like. Yeah. Unbelievable, and you know, like, shall we take a trip and all that kind of thing? Yeah, well, that's that's it. Yeah, that that's yeah, and I can and I actually be totally uh, 100% honest with you there. I did not play that gig. Oh, you didn't? No, they had the, their old drummer was there, Andy, just before I joined. Oh, right. So I missed out on that. Uh, on yeah, that gig, yeah. I, I didn't know nothing about it, so I actually didn't play. At that gig, yeah. um, but apparently it was superb. It was really, really good. Well, they were yeah. massive EMF, weren't they? E e EMF were huge then. With unbelievable. Oh yes, yeah. yeah, yeah. They were absolutely massive. Yeah, they were really but, big. And North Side as well. I mean, I North Side. Yes, yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. what I mean. And, and uh, yeah, I, I didn't do that. So, yeah, um, so when they were sort of like doing that gig, you were already with um in Fish Monkey Man, which well, of course uh, that's. that's well, Fish but Monkey Man Cal came Henry after that. Pardon? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, well, Fish Monkey Man came after Thirty Five Summers. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah, but... in fact, if I'm right, I think it did. Yeah, it did. It did come after Thirty Five Summers because when they got dropped, that was the end of Thirty Five Summers. 
So right, yeah, yeah. I, I was basically, I enjoyed <laughs> it because it was the first time ever that I had roadies for me drummer, for being a drummer. I didn't have to touch me drums. I didn't have to get the, I just finished and walked off stage. Unbelievable. Really? I used to, yeah, I used to get uh, paranoid about it. I used to go and help the drum tech. I used to tell me to go away. <laughs> <laughs> so it took me about two gigs to get used to not, not having to put my own kit away. You know what I mean? Or like, I used to turn up at gigs, honestly, Anna. I used to turn up at gigs, and the the kit was set up, all ready to play, just to be. It was just it was madness, you know. I couldn't get my head around that, you know what I mean. I know if you're signed to bands now, it, that's the way it is. Like, but I couldn't get my head around that. I just felt like I had to do something, you know what I mean. <laughs> not not thinking that this guy is getting paid to put my kit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm like thinking he's doing it for not, and no, he's not. He's getting paid really well to do it. So you know. <laughs> But that, yeah, again, with the 35 summers thing, that, that was only maybe six to seven months. I was signing autographs on everything. And it was just a weird time. You know, all the gigs that we went to were packed, full houses. And it was really, really good. We did a video for the for for the single, for the single Really Down. And we yeah, did, you yeah. can get it on YouTube now with me on it. There's a video where we shot in Spain. There was a really all... nice, there was a really nice photograph of, um, 35 summers with you so like really laughing so like <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> the back, and i think that's the one that you can see on discord so i can see it was like oh my god that is alan curry well, you, yeah, so. you, you can get the <laughs> video you can, you can you can get the video to really down of us all it was shot in spain and i think i'm yeah. spinning i'm spinning basketballs on my finger and things like that and drinking cool. a lot of it but the video the video was shot in spain and i think that was the record company saying just send them to Spain, okay? Once they've done the video, we'll drop them. You know, <laughs> so I think that it was. We were there for about a week, and then pretty much after that, he didn't really push the. They didn't push the single, and not oh. like that. And, the, and and I think thirty five summers came to an end then, oh, and then yeah, yeah. that's again when I again from that that was that was the fish monkey era, which which is a real surprise for me. You know what I mean? Because I've supported it, fish monkey. <laughs> So is it, is it when um, Carl Henry left Fish Monkey Man? So you sort of yeah. like stepped in and you became the drummer, aren't you? Well, again, when, when Thirty Five Summers stopped, I just went back to I was just working. I went to the council. Yeah, I just yeah. went to work. I didn't think. I just did my life as what it was. I I didn't go out looking to join a band. It sort of came to me. Do you know what I mean? It was yeah, like, Alan yeah. Curry's available. This band needs a drummer. Go and ask Alan Curry. And then you. But yeah, on, this, yeah, yeah. on this occasion. That the singer was Paul Dennehy, who lives in the mm-hmm. Whittle in Morton. Yeah. I, I remember one day I was coming out of work in town, about to go home, and there he was standing outside. Paul Dennehy looked at me and went, it's Alan, it's Paul Dennehy from Fish Monkey Man. I went, Oh, all right, Paul. I sort of vaguely remember him. He said, Did you fancy playing for Fish Monkey Man? on drums i said oh i didn't know you were all split up he said well yeah it's sort of gone a bit down so i'm just looking for a drummer here's my new demo there's some songs on do you fancy i said i'll give him a listen no problems like give him a listen and then of course it went on from then we we got dead close and we started doing stuff i went well we need a guitarist don't we and a bass player so i got a a guitarist called greg he was the guitarist for 35 summers Oh, right. Yeah, <laughs> and we, we, we were we dead good mates, you know, we come dead good mates. And I said, Gredge, yeah. well, Ian Greenwood, his name is, but his nickname's Gredge. I think it's something to do with Edge, you know, from YouTube, but it's more than Gredge. Because the Greenwood, he just put GR on it. So he's not the Edge, he's Gredge. And, um, <laughs> so uh, I asked him, will you come and play for Fish Monkey Man? He said, yeah, all right, yeah. And he ate the demos, he liked them. And yeah. he got... He, he got Terry and he was the bass player. He was also from from a uh, from Witness Way and all that. And then that's yeah. how that band formed. And it was a really we had an album out and everything, yeah, a couple of singles yeah. and all that. But unfortunately, they didn't do well. But it was a great time. It was a great time with the Fish Monkey and uh, Fish, Fish Monkey Man. You know, yeah. yeah, we loved it. The gigs, but I think we were a really good band. You know, tight as anything, really good musicians and all that. Yeah. And it was it was it was a good time. It was just a uh, it's just unfortunate, you know. It was just what what I'm trying to say is, any band that wants me to drum and they're looking to get signed, don't sign me because they never ever get signed. <laughs> you know? 
Every time I join the band, just keep on getting off. Or don't get anywhere. So I don't know what that's to do. Oh. <laughs> well, well, there's another one. It's not like um, a band called Kill Laura. And that's Jane Weaver. Wow. Wow, so you're you, a, were, you were I, part of that band. I was only part of that for about a month or something like that. Now, the reason why I'm saying that because uh, uh, this is weird. That Kill Laura again was managed by Steve Conrad, who was the manager of Thirty Five Summers. Okay, yeah, yeah, so yeah, he, okay, he was so... managing. He was managing yeah. them, and the drummer for Kill Laura was the drummer of Thirty Five Summers before I joined. Oh, I see. So okay. Andy, he's a great lad, Andy. He's a smashing fella. He really is a good lad. So when Andy yeah. left 35 Summers, I took over. Andy, yeah, for the remainder yeah. of the contract with, with RCA Records, I think Andy probably went to play with Kill Laura. Because Andy's drummer was a bit erratic, you know, a bit scruffy and erratic, even though he's a good player, I think when Kill Laura came around, uh, that producer called Colin McKay, who was producing the band, then said to Steve Conrad for Kill Laura, said, get Alan Curry in, because, you know, he could play on these. He's good in the studio. And uh, so I came in and basically did the songs that Andy done and tightened yeah. them up and just, you know, made them, you know, not as erratic and all that. I didn't do yeah. no live stuff with Kill Laura, with uh, Jane Weaver. I did no live stuff. It, okay. I, just, yeah. I just did the, the single and all that. Yeah, like yeah. Again, it wasn't something that I, that I pursued. It was it came to me. Yeah, because they were looking you know, for yeah, yeah, they were looking it, for an it, awesome drummer. So they all said, Are "Of you course, they were looking." <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But you're also a producer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If, yeah if, an un, unpaid producer. That one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very far and few between. I think they are. You know. Yeah, because yeah, um, I've been doing you, that for a while. Yeah, because you produced Thomas yep. Lang's. Um, well, the last German album we did was German Alphabet. Yeah. Yeah, we we we, we did all the programming on it and, and we produced it. Yeah, that was from songs that I wrote. Uh, again, that was Steve Conrad. Steve Conrad managed that whole set that that whole that whole year of yeah. recording an album because it took about a year to record. Because we did everything yeah. in, in my studio. Um, everything we did in the studio, uh, apart everything was there was no live instruments on there at all, apart from a vocal. <laughs> they were the only live instruments. Everything was programmed. <laughs> everything was programmed. But yeah, that that was yeah that was a year that 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 took about a year. Thomas Lang sang on it. Yeah. Um, did you play, again, did you play drums? Did you play drums on it, or did you just no no? It? I just produced all the drums on it, but all were all programmed. It's it's not right. playing drums. It's like as if a jazz drummer, not like a jazz drummer. It's yeah, very yeah. jazz orientated, you know, with lots of brass in and strings and yeah. you know stuff like that. You know, it, it, it not my not my kettle of fish to be honest. I was going to oh. say because looking back, it's like when you yeah. said that you're really into sort of like uh, punk or post punk yeah. or raw, and then you're producing yeah. sort of like a, a jazzy or. <laughs> So, uh, but just, but, Lang. Well, I haven't said that, but I, you know, if we take away the Thomas Lang, uh, that the German alphabet, yeah. but before that, you know, it was me and Mal that were doing. We spent years in, in our little studio in the back, me and Mal. You know, most of the stuff you hear on the first Candy Opera album, um, yeah, yeah. or the second one, uh, Relic Relics. Sorry, <laughs> that's Pink Floyd. Rarities, why I said Rarities, that. Rarities. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of the stuff on there, me and Mal done in the studio in ours. You know, so from about 98, 1998, maybe 99, me and Mal started doing studio music, you know, from a, a computer. Um, we produced so many, so much stuff, me and Mal, that, you know, I was getting better. The more I was doing it, I was learning how to do studio music. You know, it's like having a studio on your computer, and yeah. I was learning how to do it, learning all the software, how, how everything works. And I was getting better and better. And by the time 2017 came, I, I was I was good at what I'd done. And then the opportunity came to do this German alphabet with Tom Lang. You know, and again, it took about a year. Um, didn't make a penny out of it. <laughs> you know, it didn't. <laughs> You know, 
<laughs> you know, I think Tom Tom Lang went on tour with the German alphabet as well. I went to yeah, because I, I saw I saw him in Manchester, so I was all like thinking, were you there as well? Was just... No, no, I, I went to the one Liverpool. I went to the Philly, you know, the Phil. Oh, really? Yeah, I went to the Philharmonic. You know, uh, it was dead strange hearing your stuff, you know, live and all that. But uh, yeah. you know, so Tom Lang toured there. I don't I don't know how many he's done though. To be honest with you, Anna, I think he only done about four, five live dates. Yeah. Something like that. Uh, it wasn't, wasn't a big thing. Yeah, well, uh, Steve Roberts. Steve Roberts sort of, like, supported um, Thomas Lang in Manchester. That's so right, yeah, that's correct, yeah. That's yeah. Correct. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's right, years about that, yeah. You know, I, I, unfortunately, I couldn't get to that one. But, uh, yeah, again, that that happens. And um, before you knew it was over, it was done. Yeah. So I, I was moving on to my next project, whatever that was. The next person who well, loved me. The next, yeah. But it was not like... Um, so after producing this sort of like a jazzy um, oriented uh, yeah. album, yeah. Uh, did you sort of like go back to being punk with invisible heroes? Oh my <laughs> god! That, that was, that was yeah. And this one is with Mal, isn't it? Yeah, this is Mal. This is this is Dave Wiggins. And they were all the guys. That you know what that that, that was a you know I I hadn't drummed. I hadn't played drums for over ten years before that came. Yeah. I, I sort of I just used to work in the studio and never played live. I, in fact, I didn't touch any drums for it must have been ten years or something like that. Yeah, because it was about yeah, I'd say about ten years or something like that, maybe something mad like that. And um, and um, Mal, you you know you know Ian Heskett, don't you? Ian, yeah. <laughs> you know Ian from Candy Off. He, he played at your birthday. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, unfortunately, yeah. it's the one I couldn't make. I'm sorry about that, Anna. But uh, no, I couldn't make that one. Well, Ian was playing in the punk band, wasn't he? He was doing the punk thing with Mal and Dave Wiggins. And I got the opportunity to play with Mal. I think Ian left the band. So I filled his boots. Yeah. And yeah. to be honest with you, I think we'd done about four or five gigs. And it was fantastic. I loved it playing all the jam, the beat, yeah. you know, it clash. This is also like cover versions so you all did yeah. it, it's not I don't like, like you did original songs yeah, <laughs> yeah. and we did a you know a, all the uh oh what's they called you not UK slugs uh hurry up Harry come yeah. on we're going down the path you know and all that well the one, up, I'm Harry, going, you know, go ahead, yeah. the one I'm going to ask you is someone was all like saying that you actually did vocals for um jilted John that was my 15 minutes that I mean. <laughs> yeah, and that's all I got yeah we used to do it yeah I've been going out with a girl her name is Julie but one night she said to me while we were watching telly this is what she said <laughs> I want to do the best book yeah I, 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 used to, I used to do it with playing the drums and I think on one gig I actually came off the drums and I was singing it, but I'd love to have heard what we sounded like. But the crowd used to come to see us absolutely loved it. It was a it was a great experience that because me and Mal used to do our own disco. So at the, when the disco was on, me and Mal yeah. would spend hours in the studio putting all great songs together onto a little USB, and we stick it into a laptop and have that coming through the PA. <laughs> so you'd have all great great tunes in you know before yeah, yeah, we went on stage yeah. and then after. We come off, we carry on with the music, you know, all great songs. Oh, like, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. You know, so, who, who never did big enough, but it was a great time now. So what ha what happened with Invisible Heroes? Are they are you still uh, going or are you still No, going? no. <laughs> that, that, yeah, without putting too much, there was, was a slight falling out uh, over uh, Dave Wiggins and his brother, who was the bass player. Yeah. Uh, Mike, lovely fella. Both of them are lovely. Um and I think it was a, I think it was something like that. But we just stopped playing. We just stopped playing. Just stopped. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We just yeah. stopped. Yeah, um, we had trouble with the, with the bit with the with Carl and all that. But it's all it's all right now. Everything's fine. But it yeah, it just got yeah. a bit messy. It just got a bit messy, and then it came to an end. And it's sad, really, because we were yeah. good. We were, we were good. We, so, you know, we, we were a good live band for doing that type of stuff. Yeah, and I, yeah. I do, I do sort of miss that, you know what I mean? Yeah, because this is like um, 
do you know with the Griffiths brothers, so the real people, they do yeah, yeah. covers. They do, they, do, yeah. they do covers, which they yeah. call themselves the real deal. So is this like yeah. can the opera's equivalent then doing invisible Co heroes? Is like... Could have been. It could have been <laughs> because what Mal was doing uh, later on with Invisible Heroes when we were still together is he was using the band to write new songs as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, one of which that we do now is a band called a Hashtag Delete. Life wow. is good. So the, we were doing it as a punk band then. Really? Wow. You know, it wasn't what it is now. Yeah, It wasn't yeah. What, it, what it is now, but it was. It had all the flavours of that, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah. Mal was doing a couple of songs, which he wanted to, what he wanted to do was bring that punk elements into it you know that clash into these yeah. new songs but use the the invisible heroes band to play it do you know what i mean <laughs> as a practice, so it, it, a practice. yeah well it could have been it could be could have practice for what was coming up you know what i mean or experimenting with, <laughs> yeah, you know not knowing what was going to happen with the with, with you know with, with the future of candy opera you know what i mean yeah that that, that I, I don't think that had nothing to do with it i think mal really because he's a songwriter yeah, and it, yeah. it's in him to put songs out. He's, you know, it's in him. He can't help it. You know, he, he, he had to do something. He wanted to write songs, you know what I mean? And so what he'd done, he was basing it on the punk elements. You know, oh. you know that sort of, you know, you know that sort of clash. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, New yeah. Division, New Order type sort of feel. That's yeah. what he wanted to get across, but using the, the punk band that we were in. Go for so and you know it, it, we went in the studio, done a few things, didn't didn't come off, but it was it was a great experience. You know the punk thing live was brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> well, I saw some clips. It looked like really people are really enjoying themselves. Oh, and the band as well. We, we used to play in a pub, and we used to play in a pub, uh, which was about a ten minute walk from Liverpool Football Club Anfield. Oh, but right. the bar. The barman knew that once the match had finished, the fans get let out, and they all go to pubs for the drink. So, and they all walk past the pub yeah. where we play. So we timed it to actually start when the fans were coming out. So as the fans were coming past the pub, this is not just Liverpool fans, but away fans. They come into the pub, and they they be hearing, "I don't like Mondays." And so they'd all be joining and singing, you know. Uh, like, <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? Or we'd, be, we'd be doing a, a beaches, you know, by a, a peaches by a stranglers, stranglers, you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 you know. Well, and um, it was absolutely fantastic, yeah. and um, it was just a good thing. That's I, I loved that time, that was great. That I had a really the good time. I, doing that. The one I saw on Facebook, it's like, uh, what song was it when they said that when the kids are united? Oh, when the kids here, they will never be defeated. Yeah, when the kids yeah, play no. United, yeah, they will never. That was really cool. Oh, it's we used to have them come yeah, on stage so... with us and jumping up, and Val yeah, was jumping so... up, and David was yeah, fantastic. That's... You know, so you can imagine what. Know. Sorry, you can yeah, imagine man. what you can imagine what it must have been like for the original bands in that time when they were doing that, <laughs> and what the fans were like. You know, like a. Uh, when we, when we did like the specials, you know what I mean? Um, yeah, yeah. Songs by the specials, you know, yeah. it's too much too young and things like that. We did too much too young, you know, and it was brilliant. It was just a great experience. But <laughs> I, I loved, I loved that era. That was great. That. Well, well, now so um, after Invisible Heroes, we're gonna go back to Candy Opera because that's when I actually um, found out and become uh, became a fan of Candy Opera, mm. and also well. If we had so like if we didn't have any um, technical problems in the beginning, I would have so like included in my introduction um, a massive thank you to Fire Station Records to Uwe yeah. Weidman and yeah. this you know his team for uh, bringing back um, Candy Opera. Yeah. So yeah. Um, so how did that happen? So how is it that so like from 2018 all of a yeah. sudden there's this band that's you know, like an amazing band, and but it, they've been there since 1980s, or like 80s. yeah, since the very early 80s. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, I'll, I'll tell you as much as I know. I've got something, I've got a bit of a bad memory at the moment. But what happened was, is 
Back in 2018, Brian, I think, asked Mal to put the original demos on YouTube. You know, some people can listen to it. Yeah. Because it was just, it was just, in, it was in the cupboard, just gathering dust. No one had heard it. You know, he just wanted to yeah. put it out there for people to listen to and just see what happens. I and don't this, think this there was is no what a way to travel. This is what a way. Yeah, to travel. this is it. Like, what a way yeah. to travel, yeah. uh, religion and stuff like that. You know, um, yeah. that's that's what I'm thinking. It is maybe Mal can, you know, comment on this. But yeah, it was on YouTube anyway. I don't know the time from when it got first got put onto YouTube to the time that Fire Station got involved. I don't know what the timing was on that. Whether it was a month or two months, whatever it was, Fire Station got in touch with Brian and said he'd yeah. basically love to put these out because he was into 80s stuff and yeah, yes, them yeah, out and getting them yeah. like giving them a new sense of life, uh, a, a new lease of life again, you know, yeah, yeah, songs right. that haven't been here before. Get get them all vinyl. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, so <laughs> uh, yes, yeah, so he, he, he said to us a favor basically, shut down the YouTube channel for them. And let's get going on this. And that's where it started from. And Fire Station, you know, did all the work on that. Yeah. Uh, Mal, Mal put together all the artwork and all that. And well, I think they ended up using uh, Alan on the front, you know, playing the guitar. Yeah. Which is a great. On the, on it the looks very much like uh, Roddy Frame or something. Yeah, he's, he's <laughs> got, he had the haircut. He's just typical of them sort of very early, <laughs> yeah. very early to mid late eighties, you know. He just looked like he was in a band. He looked like the lead yeah, singer. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, he had that sort of orange juice type look, you know, that type of, you know. Yeah. And um, it was a great cover, fantastic cover. And, and all the songs went on, and it was just really, really good to have on. And then oh, basically that's, that's it just amazing. went, you know, it just went a bit mad, you know, with the, the people who just yeah. got into it. And, and it created, like, a, at least a life for Candy Opera again, you know, something that, you know, I always think that they deserve more. But it's great what they've got, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, you know, I always wish Mal had been successful, you know, in his, in his day because he deserved it, you know. Yeah. Well, song, you, you song played song. In, in Berlin. Ah, was, well, I thought that was just really, oh, really amazing. <laughs> you, know, it, 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 you know, and we do the Shine On gigs, as you well know, Anna. And you know, Shine On gigs as well, yeah. yeah, the, yeah. Berlin, the, Berlin, the Berlin gig is one of my highlights of be drumming ever, you know, for any yeah. right through. Well, made a lot of did, places. Did it just sort like, did everything sort of like just go back to you just like that, you know, like when you ride a bike or something that you never forget to like ride? I mean, the drums. The, the drums, the drum parts of it. Yeah, it is. It's just time. right. Yeah, it's riding a bike. It's learning to hold the sticks again. It's learning to yeah. be able to hit the bass drum. It's, you know, and when, when, when we first did our first rehearsal, Back in 2018, you know, everyone wasn't there. There's was only a few of us. We did have a full complement of the band. And when I was playing the drums for like what a way to travel and things like that, I felt like a, a cabaret drummer. You know, really just I couldn't hardly play them. You know, it's like I just couldn't do things that like I could do years ago, you know what I mean? Even <laughs> when I played with the punk band as well. But uh, that that just I just sort of a couple of years later, everything was just back to normal. Do you yeah. know what I mean? And once the bands really got together, then especially for that Berlin gig, because that was a. I know we before that we played a Park Street, didn't we? That's right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah and that was that, that was a fantastic gig. That, yeah, that was your first actually. The first one, yeah, the first one back. back. You know, that that was the real eye opener for a lot of people who come to see us and all that. Yeah. Uh, oh my god, that day. one was just absolutely amazing. I was yeah, like, was, oh my yeah. god, this band is just so good. But um I was so like I remember when I went to Berlin to see you, um there was actually so like a group of people who approached me and one of them sort of like asked um how how long you have you been a fan? And I was sort of like saying since August. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or since February. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I think they were a bit disappointed that I didn't actually know you. But I've got to say hello to Karen, Karen McPherson. Hi, Karen. Oh and yeah, hi, Karen. Karen. Yeah, yeah, another Karen's great fan. Been a fan yeah. of Candy yeah. Opera since oh, the before very me. Beginning. It was like... yeah, absolutely years. You know what I mean? Yeah. But it yeah. doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't matter when you you first hear Candy Opera. You, you know. 
you, you either love them or you don't. And then once you love them, I think it's very hard to, you know, to, to not yeah, love I them just, again. You know what I mean? I just felt like, I just felt like oh my God, it, it's all like think of it. It's like a fake fan. So like only knowing them since February yeah. 2018, February. Yeah. <laughs> that's like, you're not, you're not a proper fan, Anna. You're not a you proper know, fan. Not, I know that's what I thought. I was like, I'm not being a problem. Yeah. <laughs> unless you unless you were like 18 or 19 years of age in 1982 <laughs> or 83 then you're not you're not a fan <laughs> but, yeah. but, yeah. if, if you love something then you're a fan aren't you? <laughs> if you love something you're a fan i know I, yeah it, you're yeah, not cheating at all that, you're a proper oh. fan you're a proper fan you love your music <laughs> that, that that much we do know but it's it's a really sort of like um it's an incredible time to end uh year 2018 because not only did you release the 45 revolutions per minute rarities was also released that same year and i didn't actually know about it until i went to berlin yeah and saw that people are so that there's sort of like another candy opera album that's being sold yeah. And yeah. I thought, oh my god, what is this? <laughs> yeah, a lot of the songs on there was the ones that me and Mal done, you know, in the studio. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. which which are fantastic sh- songs. They deserved they deserve to be oh, remixed yeah. and you know and re-released because they are great <laughs> songs, you know. Um we we also did quite a, we did about three songs with you know John the guitarist. Yeah, our yeah. guitarist now John. Again, about maybe eight, nine, maybe ten years ago, I think something like that. John sang on three of our songs, me and Mel's songs, and it was fantastic. And they're the, the brilliant now to, to this day. But I don't think yeah. the clusters can the opera songs because John's singing on them, not Mel. Oh, Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. but I, I, it's, I, got I, to be, it's got to be Mal singing before. Yeah, it's I'm, not saying, I'm not saying that. <laughs> that's it's not rubber stamped. I was just saying, maybe we could do it. Three songs featuring John O'Neill, <laughs> you know, yeah. Candy Opera featuring John O'Neill. Do you know what so I mean? it's not actually new, new to the band. You've known him, so like yeah, you know, John. So John we used to go, yeah. used to go watch him in a in a in a pub singing songs. You know, uh, he used to do songs like Somewhere Over a Rainbow, you know, by Judy Garland. Yeah, yeah. But he, he did it with the guitar and this jazzy way, this like real cool jazzy way of doing it. And I thought, oh my God, what a voice, you know what I mean? Yeah. What a yeah. talent, you know what I mean? And uh, we asked him then, you know, if you fancy singing, and he said, yeah, not a problem. And we all b- became good friends to this day. Yeah. And now John's in the band, now which is fantastic. Yeah, now he's in the band. Which, yeah, yeah sure, it's even yeah. better. Yeah. However, we love John. I love John. You know, we sound like you know, he's a really good, good guy. Dead yeah. helpful, you know what I mean? He's sounded he's part of, he's just part of the band now. It's like he was always <laughs> in the band, you know what I mean? You know what well, I mean? Mal, well, I don't know if Mal was referring to Candy Opera, but he's just sort of like type I never really liked them. <laughs> I, never, I don't know, I never really liked Candy Opera or whatever. So, but he also said it's so like funny, it's like it's like <laughs> sorry, What's he- it's like talking to a dementia <laughs> I'm so sorry. No, I get this all the time. No, I, 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 when we're together as a band, Frank goes, Do you remember that gig back in 1986 where we played? I go, No, I don't remember nothing. He said, What do you mean you don't remember that? That's why I say, Sometimes it's good to have me on this show, Anna. And sometimes you'll go, Poor thing. Oh, he can't remember. I get loads of stick off Mal. He always does the same thing. (laughs) Well, the the last album you did, that was actually, uh, that's an incredible album, The Patron Saint of Heartache. And these are all sort of like new material. It's not like um, from the 80s. These are actually, yeah. Um, Yes, brand spanking you. Yeah, and I think the reception for that album is just incredible, isn't it? Everybody yeah. loved that album. I mean, I know it's that in the Philippines, yeah. you know, there's quite a lot of um, Filipinos who ordered their uh, yeah. CDs and vinyl and stuff. Wow. So, yeah, yeah. So you it do have a following in the Philippines. <laughs> well, yeah, I was just saying, and I get us over there to a place and we go over. Yeah. That'll be a journey. <laughs> I would love that. 
<laughs> I, I, I wonder if that would if that if that would better Valian. You know, we could have better Valian. You know. Yeah, it's a it's a great new album. I'd, I'd, you know, the new songs that Mal's coming up with now, you know, again, they are gonna be great songs and we're looking for a different a different vibe and the new stuff that Mal which of course you haven't heard um, but uh, we've already started doing the work on it. I've yeah. been busy. At, I've been quite busy at the moment with a with an artist and all that. I can um, do another stuff with the studio, but um, the songs that we've I've heard from Mal and what we've done are really, really good. You know, and it's a different sort of approach to what you might know Candy over. Be you know, it's not. We're not like it. We're not a jazz band. It's not jazz. You know what I mean? No. <laughs> no. I think Mal's looking for big well, open spaces yeah. and things like that. You know. Well, of course, the, the well, well, for me anyway. Well, one of the best things about this, the patron saint of Hartig is getting Paul Simpson to sort of like do two songs. I know. Yeah, That's it's great, like isn't he? Uh, awesome that one. Yeah, it's like, you know, I, and he's a he's an all right guy as well. It's like he's meeting me. Oh my god, because like I used to sit in when I was a youngster, when I was like back in about eighty, was it eighty five, eighty six, or whatever it was, maybe earlier. When I used to play in the ministry in my first rehearsals, where the scene, you know, Bono was at when Bono used yeah, to go. Yeah, yeah. When I used to go to rehearsals, I, I used to knock on the door because I used to know that the Wild Swans were on. And I'd open the door, there'd only be like one light on, it'd be dead like Moody. And there's the Wild Swans. And I went, Can I come in? I was already in a band. And watch yeah, He said, Yeah, come on, come in. I used to go and sit down on the floor and watch the whole set. Oh I'll be absolutely God. God, I'll be absolutely gobsmacked at what I listen to. I was like that, oh my god, I'm sitting in listening to Revolutionary Spirit live, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah as a kid. So I've always loved them, do you know what I mean? Yeah. So to, to see Paul Simpson and and, and, and hear him come on, and he, he's just a normal guy, and he's just you know, as a kid, well, as a kid, probably the same age as him. You know, I used to go like that, oh my god, it's the wild swans. Yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs> Oh, we still do that in the Philippines. It was like, yeah. oh my God, Paul Simpson. Yeah. I know. He still looks good, <laughs> doesn't he? You know, he still looks good. He did then, do you know what I mean? But yeah, yeah it, was, it was great having him on. It was great having him on the album. And he sounds brilliant as well. Sounds great with Mal. Yeah. When you were at the studio, so like Elevator Studio and Paul Simpson was there, were you all like, like me, it was all like like a fan girl. <laughs> Were you like, oh my god, Paul Simpson? <laughs> like, yeah. no, prob- probably when you looked at us, you probably would have thought they don't look like they're uh, really bothered that Paul Simpson. But in them, in, in our <laughs> minds, we were spinning round on like a on a Ferris wheel like that. Going, yeah. <laughs> you know, Paul Simpson. Oh my god, I was like that in my mind. <laughs> yeah. but like when I was talking to, him, I was being, oh, hey, Paul, how are you doing? You okay? <laughs> But in my mind, I was like that. Oh my god, it's Paul Simpson. Oh my god, it's Paul Simpson. <laughs> yeah, that's true. But in reality, I was trying to look dead cool. Yeah, you can sing and ask stuff. I don't mind. It doesn't bother me. Whatever you <laughs> want to do, Paul. But in my mind, you know, inside yeah. my mind, I was bound like that. Oh, oh my god, Paul Simpson, give me strength. Well, so I'm weird. really hoping. I'm really hoping that one day when you do a gig, you can get Paul Simpson to do the crazy and do the, that's all. Yeah. Oh, vice versa. That would be, well, that, 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 that'd be brilliant. That. If that could yeah. come off, that would be great. You know what I mean? I'd love well, to do talking that. About, well, talking about gigs, you've got a, a gig coming up in March. Mm. So do yeah. you want to sort of like talk about uh, Well, that gig? actually, I can't talk about that one. Oh, you know? Oh, because, right. well, it's, on, it's on Facebook. Yeah. Like, yeah, that's what I mean. Well, because I don't go on Facebook, I've been okay. absolutely, I say, I've been absolutely run off my feet at the moment. I haven't had time to think about the gigs that we're doing. You know what I mean? Mal's going to hate me for this because he thinks it's a great time to get it out there. But yeah. uh, I haven't, I haven't concentrated much because it's only like the last couple of days that I've had a bit of free time. You know, uh, from what I've been doing, I've been really busy. Yeah. So, uh, well, it's going to be on the 19th, on the 19th yeah. of March mm-hmm. at Thornton Hoff mm-hmm. Village Club. So oh, that's are they? Thornton Hoff. Oh, am I playing in it? Am I in the band still? Am I in the band when we play? Because I don't even know. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> don't even know if I'm playing. No. <laughs> no, I, I look forward to it. Do you know what we've been doing as well in, in, in rehearsals? We've been doing like a, 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 a acoustic, acoustic songs of 
the songs off the album, off the piece and scenes. Oh, they sound right. fantastic. There was yeah. acoustic, like a more sort of a, you know, a, a sort of intimate sort of feeling. Yeah. You know, yeah. And they sound fantastic like that. Well, so that venue. that's what we're looking for. That's what we're looking for, that type of thing as well. Yeah, because that venue in Thornton Hoff, I mean, that's not really so like a big, yeah. like Hangar 34. That's No. I was all like Quite. thinking, yeah, that would probably be an acoustic sound. Well, that's probably why we're doing that. That's probably the gig I'm thinking that's going to be the acoustic as well, you know. And it, it, yeah. I yeah. think when we rehearsed them, I kept on saying to them, Alan, I said, they sound fantastic, you know, when they're intimate, when it's just the yeah. acoustics. And it seems like there's more space in the songs that, and, and they just sound really, really good. So, yeah, so the thought one, the, the one that you just said now, that's the one that thinks it's probably going to be the acoustics. So I'll be, I'll, be, I'll, be, I'll be playing on very little drums. I'm probably singing as well. Yeah, I might be singing as well. Brilliant. So, yeah. I'm really looking forward to that one because I'm yeah. definitely going to go and see it. I don't know how I'm going to get there because that place is actually a bit difficult to get to if you're not in the car. Oh, is it? Oh, right, yeah. okay. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, oh, so, how are you going to get down then? Well, hopefully Aiden will drive me, so... Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm not right. to not like force him to drive me there. But... Okay, fair enough. <laughs> because it's not like it's not like in um, Liverpool City Centre that it's quite easy because there's the train yeah. and yeah, oh, you did there. That's easy, yeah, you did, yeah. Yeah, I yeah. think I think I think it'll be a good one. I really do. Yeah. I well, really Karen, do. Karen just said that um, she remembers when Candy Opera was all acoustic. Uh, guitar and bass and drums. So wow, there used to be sort of like a time where it's just an acoustic one. So this is. Probably... I, I think I think the early days, you, you probably would have found Candy Opera being more acoustic. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I, I I think of course that's where they all start from. When Mel writes, they all start from an acoustic guitar, of course, and they always sound great on acoustic. I'm not saying once we put guitars and drums on, they become worse. Yeah, it's just, <laughs> you know, you know, I'm not saying that at all. They're still great songs, but. You know, it would be nice to hear these songs in, a, in an intimate, Inti room. yeah, yeah. You know, where it, it's it's quite you're, you're close to the band, and it's just Frank's playing an acoustic yeah. bass. You know, two or two or three acoustic guitars, and me on very limited drums. You know, just keeping it really low key. <laughs> and you know, just your voice. You know, sort of like you will hear you uh, sort of like sing. Yeah, <laughs> I, I don't. I don't want to put the kibosh on that, Anna. I bought my voice. <laughs> <laughs> but is there? <laughs> Um, so, well, is there going to be a new album coming out this year, or, or hopefully that that's what, that's what that's what no that's what we're looking for this year. I know with COVID, yeah. it's been a bit of a mess at the moment, like, but no, that that's what we're, we're, we're hoping that we could go into Rockfield, you know, the famous Rockfield Studios, yeah, yeah. you know, and um, and get the real the real bass drums, get everything down and. We can have a bit of experience playing and you know recording a great studio wow. like Rockfield. Yeah. yeah. And we've already started. We, we, we haven't re we released a couple of songs, but the, the the crux of the songs are coming through, and they're sounding really good. And it's a, it's a different different approach yeah. from Mal, you know, uh, which we've talked about and all that as a band. As not not saying it's going to be. You run on the mill, whatever candy operate, you know, you think of a candy opera song is or a style. But because it, it, it'll always be candy opera when Mel sings, you know, once he starts singing, it's always candy opera, isn't it? Yeah. Because he's yeah, got, that, yeah, got that distinctive yeah. voice. But as a sound, I think it'll be a bit more wider and open, big drums with with, with great with great hooks, more with more space yeah. in the music, so it's more atmospheric. So but you're going just, to Rockfield, Rockfield Studio, just to do this? Yeah, new album. that's what wow. that's what we want to do. We'd love to do that's that, amazing. you know. Uh, if we can get pick up enough money, then yeah, yeah, that that'll that, be absolutely brilliant. Th did you see the documentary about the uh, Rockfield Studios? Because amazing. It's book, been all sorts played there, haven't you? you know, yeah, even like down to Queen. Nice. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, oh, Oasis or everyone. The Stone Roses, Roses yeah. Went there, so. it, you know, <laughs> It, it, it'll just be, it'll just be great to go down, get a great engineer, you know, and yeah. you know, and and get what we can done there. That'll just be that would be superb. That I would love that. Yeah, 
Yeah, you know? oh, that would be great. I mean, it's like really exciting news for yeah. all the opera fans to have yeah. a new album coming out this year. Yeah. And then yeah, hopefully definitely. there'll be there'll be more gigs as well. Oh hopefully yeah, De definitely. Yeah, yeah. definitely have more yeah. gigs. Uh, we're just sort of really, I think, as a band with John coming in, he, you know, he's been in a band like for a bit now, but we're still sort of we still feel it's new. We're still, yeah, yeah. you know, we're, practices have been hard to do at the moment, just due to travelling and Ken has to come from, you know, Ken's in Newcastle, so it's all yeah, right. we can still get together. It's just been a bit difficult, but once we start yeah. getting together. You know, and, and you know, and, and do more rehearsals, and you know, it, it'll it'll be great. You know, getting some of this new stuff as well. I know it feels like the last album hasn't really been heard by anyone. You know, because when COVID kicked in, you know, it's do you know what I'm saying by that. It feels like we haven't like with the with forty five revolutions and all that. We we seem to like murder that one. We've done loads of it. You play loads, of, yeah, live. But you, yeah, you're but talking with, about live. You're talking about playing it live. Yeah, playing live, yeah. But I yeah, feel like with, yeah. with the Basin States, we haven't. Yeah. We, we, I well, feel like we've, we've only done it in spits and spats. That's just the way it's been, you know. It's, it's yeah. the way it's gone. Um, I always feel well, like the album should, should should have a bit more. We should be able to do a bit more with it. But you've got to move on, haven't you? You've got to, you know, you're only as good as your last album or whatever you look at, you know, and... Well, it's because of COVID, the... COVID as well. So, and things are getting yeah, better. That's what I mean, yeah, gigs, yeah, COVID, gigs are COVID, you know, yeah. back. So, uh... COVID put the kibosh on everything, doesn't it? It really <laughs> did put the kibosh on everything. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, <laughs> with this album, with this new, with, with just with the new songs, even for myself, uh, I've recorded a few. Me and Mal have recorded some, you know, uh, trying to get the basis of what we think it might sound like. You know, yeah. they sound pretty awesome, you know what I mean? I think they're going to be great, really are. Oh, that's that's brilliant news. That's really, really good. Yeah. But, um, right, so we're coming to the end of the uh, podcast yeah. now. I just like... Okay, oh, sorry. But, <laughs> sorry, Mal said that make, make sure the nurse gets him back to his room yeah, he does it all the time. It's okay. He, he, you know, I, I was a bit worried about some of the questions because I thought I don't know if I'll be able to answer that. I'm sorry. I, went, me. I know. When you brought up when you brought up the gigs, when you brought up the new gigs that we were doing, I, I, I froze in my mind. The wheel stopped, and the mouse just stopped like that on, on the wheel in my head, and the mouse didn't go down no more. And I thought, what am I going to say? Because we, 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 had, we, we had been somewhere else the last like few months, you know what I mean? So, yeah. but yeah, I'm going to tell, I'm, I'm going to kill him when I see him. <laughs> well, yeah. I also, I also want to say um, hello to Phil Wiley. <laughs> hello, Phil. Phil Wiley's here. Yeah, Phil Wiley. So, like, said, oh my god, tell him I didn't mean said, what I said about him. <laughs> well, he said big, <laughs> on, big undies. I don't know what that big is. Undies. But he put big on these. I was like, with, yeah. with a kiss. So with a kiss. Like. Yeah, okay. I have no idea what he means by that. Anna. This, this, this again is my memory. It's like something he knows I don't. And um, Gilbert, Gilbert also saw like another fan of um, Candy Opera from the Philippines. Uh, yeah. he, just, he just sort of like said hello and great chat and learned many things about Candy Opera. Okay. And you're nice so one. funny as well. So um, can I just ask you, do you have any drumming heroes? I do. <laughs> I do. I have. I have. It's hard to say what my big one is. I've got about five, you know, something like that. Uh, I'm going by by age as well because when I was younger yeah my heroes were Joey Musker <gasps> oh yeah. yeah oh my god yeah. which reminds me this is so yeah. bad of me because we were having problems He's earlier but no Joe Joe actually sends his regards oh uh, he always it's, does he's a great lad yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, sorry it's late Joe I'm glad that you reminded it's, me uh, uh, Joey yeah, Musker is like one of my, my, my early heroes from the start I mean, uh, Pete Lafitas, you know, uh, from the Bunny Men. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they, they were like, they, they they were like the ones for me, you know. They were they were brilliant. And then uh, as it got a bit further on, uh, Budgie from 
Susie. Oh, Susie in the Bank. Yeah, Susie in the Bank. Yeah, yeah. Wow. He's uh, from Liverpool, isn't he? Yeah, he's, yeah, he's born on Queen's Drive. Which, <laughs> that's funny, because Queen's Drive goes through about <laughs> six boroughs. It's about 30 miles long or something, but, you know. But, yeah, so he was, he was from Liverpool, but he was like, his, his rhythms were just unbelievable. Stuart Copeland from the police, especially early police as well. You know, you could say, well, John Bonham and all that, but they were fantastic drummers, but it was what I was into at the time. You know, yeah. that's what I was in. I, I was into all that, you know, uh, Vic Buckler from the Jam. <laughs> You oh know, my god, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I absolutely yeah, loved yeah. him. He, he, he always yeah. looked stiff on the drums like that, but he was brilliant. He was absolutely brilliant. But they, they were my sort of they were my heroes at the at, at that time, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now there's that many, isn't it? There's that many great drummers. You know, the Chili Peppers drummer is superb as well. He's one of, he's a really great drummer. It's not so much what they can do in technical times, it, it's how they how they could say a song with their drumming, like Ringo, for the Beatles, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. the well, he's not that good a drummer, but he was, he was right for the Beatles, and he, he put across what he did for the Beatles, and no other drummer could have done that then, Stuart Copeland for the police, for the, yeah, he, that's right, yeah, he was perfect, yeah. he was perfect match, so it wasn't that he was technically good, which he was, he was just a brilliant drummer, but he was perfect for the police then, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, the way, that's, that's, yeah, the way, yeah. That's the way I look at it. But yeah, so they were they were my heroes. Yeah, well, you mentioned Ringo because <laughs> there's another one that Mal asked. It yeah. was all like asking about where did you leave the floor, Tom? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's another one that is all like said. Uh, oh like, no, okay, I don't know what that is, but, <laughs> but well, you do know that I that my drum kit that you see me use is Frank's. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's Frank's drum kit. Oh, now, okay. Frank thinks that I've lost his floor tom because Frank is a floor tom short. And I said I haven't used it. So I'm saying live on your show now, <laughs> ask the drummer that I do not know where that floor tom is, Frank. <laughs> Don't come down to me house anymore. Don't knock at me house at two in the morning. Stop stalking me. I do not know where that tom is. Okay? I used to be... A good friend of yours, but do not knock at my house no more. Don't follow me in the park when I'm taking the dog for a walk. I can see it in the trees thinking I've got the floor, Tom. Frank, I haven't. Believe me. <laughs> Don't knock at my house anymore. <laughs> he, actually, he actually said so, like when I was asking you about drumming heroes, he put me. <laughs> so he saw, like, oh, yeah. I forgot to mention Frank. Sorry, yeah. you were second on my list. I just forgot about you. You can carry on stalking me, Frank. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> right. Well, okay. Well, the last question now is: Have you got any advice for all the aspiring drummers out there? Because so, yeah, you've been bother. drumming since like you were 60. <laughs> yeah, sorry. No, I was like, uh, any aspiring drummers? Uh, oh God! Any aspiring drummers? Don't give up. Don't what give up the drum and, and put yourself out there. I didn't. Do you know what I mean? I, I sort of, I floated into bands by people asking me, uh, put yourself out there. If you're good enough, put yourself out there. Get yourself known and uh, and just don't stop. It's a great instrument to play. And don't get fat. That's another thing. Isn't it? <laughs> yeah, because that's hard. When you get fat, it's hard to play drums. <laughs> Because you sweat all the time, so always, always stay thin. Best drummers are the best drummers are thin. <laughs> <laughs> so my advice, my advice to drummers is don't eat and get yourself out there. <laughs> and do, do you tell them to sort of like get lessons or no? Because you didn't get, you didn't have any. Sort I of didn't get it. it, 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 it <laughs> the world's your your oyster. If you feel like you're not good enough. And get lessons. <laughs> if you if you're into it and it's in you, you'll learn anyway. You'll just well this is, this is a good advice from Mal. Make what? sure you have a kid. Make sure yeah. Make sure, you have a job. Make sure yeah. Make sure it's your own kid. Don't borrow anyone's <laughs> because you'll end up getting stalked because you think lost on some place, don't you? Oh my so, god. Well, this advice you. is buy your own kit. 
by your own kid. <laughs> oh my God, thank you so much. Thank no you so much, Alan. I really enjoyed it. And uh, once again, I'm so sorry for so like stressing well, you it, out. Earlier. It worked out in the end, and it worked out in the end. It worked out. Yeah. In the end. We got there. We got there. That's been a pleasure, and I've loved it. It's good. Oh, thank um, well you done. So it's a good. It's, it's a good thing you got going. Next one to do after this is ask the lead singer. <laughs> no, we've got Monty to do that already. We've got it's oh, all about you? new wave. So uh, oh, he was, he was Mal was already on. It's all about new wave last yeah, year. Yeah, he remembers everything. Well, ask ask the bass players next. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's another one. I yeah. was, yeah, I was the, the bass player actually. That I was actually, well, somebody actually asked me that last year. When are you going to do the ask the bass player? Absolutely, yeah. But with Frank, though, and with Frank, you know, because he's getting on a bit, he's a bit old. He might have a bit of problem with the internet and all that. You know, <laughs> yeah, you might have to send him carrier pigeon. You know, carrier pigeon. <laughs> You know, something like that. So I'm like sending my Yeah, and you might need about you might need a three hour show because he just goes on and on, it doesn't stop. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Oh. You have to take a day off work. <coughs> oh my god, pardon me. But um <laughs> Mar just says it's bedtime now. <laughs> yeah, bedtime now, yeah, bedtime definitely. <laughs> <laughs> I also want to say hello to David Chambers. David is also a drummer from oh, a band called Or and um, uh, Cold, the Common Cold, <laughs> in the other Preston bands as well. Sorry, so, what did, it, did you say? The band are called the Common Cold. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Is yeah, that what they're called? The Common I Cold. Think, yeah, I think it's the Common Cold. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Okay, the common cold. I like that. That's different. It's good. <laughs> common cold. Yeah, but, yeah, so it's David Chambers who's so, like he's a drum. He's he's also like I haven't actually seen him play the drums, but I've met him because I was supposed to go and see his band, but mm. I was doing so like uh, ask the drummer so like thing, and yeah. when I got to the venue, they've already finished, so. <laughs> I yeah. wasn't able to sort of like see him play, but I will do. I will do some sometime. So uh, he's he's got yeah. a drummer's name, and he such a drummer's name, Dave Chambers. That's David a, Chambers. Yeah. Al, Al Curry is not a drummer's name. Really. <laughs> yes. It's just not a drummer's name. It's just Al Curry. He can play drums. Dave Chambers is a drummer. Is a drummer. <laughs> yeah, that's Dave Chambers. Yeah. <laughs> Tony Mack. Tony Mack for the early. Oh my god. Tony Mack. That's a great name for his drummer. Yeah. Well, I shouldn't Joe say Muska. This. Joe Muska, Joe Muska. Wow. <laughs> Pete Lapitas. Al Curry. Doesn't sort of it's not pop star, is it? It's not pop star. <laughs> well, I shouldn't really say this because I don't normally saw like do the guest announcement until you know yeah. you, well, until tomorrow. But okay. next week we're gonna have Tony McGregor, which is like a You're gonna Tony Mack. Yeah, That's I'm going to have Tony Mack Mac next week. Well, I'm going to I'm gonna have to come in on that one. I'm going to have to come in on that one. He yeah. sounds Tony Mack. Yeah, he, Tony Mack is a, a fantastic fella. I've knew Tony Mack since the early days of Tambourines. Yeah, 16 Tambourines. And, and he, he, hasn't, he hasn't changed. He hasn't changed at all. He's just fantastic. Great drummer and a fantastic yeah. guy. He really is yeah. a boss, boss guy. Oh, and he, he owes me five grand, so if you can, just have a word if you can get that money off him as well. Okay, bring that up as well. Tell him I won't say nothing. As long as, I'll keep it to myself. I won't say nothing, as long as he pays me back. Shall I ask him that question then next week? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's nothing personal. You'll know what I mean. And tell, tell him to give me give me my drums back. He's had them for years, Tony. <laughs> No, he's great, Tony. He's a good lad. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to that one. But, oh, my okay, God. Then. Thank you so much. Pleasure. I really so, like, enjoyed it. And I'm so good. glad because I thought when you, you know, when you didn't, so, like, when I first sent you a message, if you would, yeah. if you could go and ask the drummer, you just ignored it. You didn't say anything no, to me. I'm so I glad did. I saw you on Shine On and, yeah. and, and ask you personally. And you said yes. I'm, I'm not a measy head. I just, I just, I just 
don't go on them much, you know. So, but I, need, I, I do need to up me. I do need to up me game on that. But I did say I'll do it, and we've done it. And we've done and it, it's, it's and been, you it's, were it's, so it's, patient, even though we've had like it took us an hour and fifteen minutes to come. Well, I should have. I should have just got my laptop. I should have got my laptop from the start. So like, <laughs> I, I thought it would have worked on the phone, but it didn't. But anyway, it, it's all worked out, and it, yeah, it was a good yeah. show. Enjoyed. We it. got there, so it, we got it there. Was, it was such a, a, a really, really amazing. I had a great time. Chatting God, to me you, too, me too. I'm going to see you and Candy Opera in March. Yeah. So I'm really looking forward to that one. Yeah. And, absolutely. You know, it's, it's like, absolutely. Since, since 2018, Candy Opera is my favorite, my most favorite yeah. band so in the world. Great, so idea. Like, great yeah. band. I love so being in them. I love, yeah. I love <laughs> being with them. Listen, all right, I will see you very soon at that gig, okay? Yeah. Thank and what so time? Much. What what time for Sony next week? Same two o'clock. Yeah, two o'clock next week, and hopefully okay, there won't be back. any. I'll try and sort like have a practice one with them before we go live. So hopefully there won't yeah. be any technical. It works, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think you'll be all right with Sony. I think he's. A, um, I think he's a. I think he's. I think he's up there with computers. He's a good lad. Computer, all right. All right. <laughs> all right. All right. Thank you so much. much. Thank all you. Right, Enjoy then. the rest Bye. of the weekend. Bye. You too. I'll bye. take care. Bye bye now. Bye bye. Bye bye, everyone. Oh my god, that was just so good. It's so funny. Thank you so much, um, everyone, for joining us live. And I do apologize once again for um the it took us all like we were so late, um, like for an hour and 15 minutes. I hope um Graham Wynn, if you're watching, I'm so sorry. I, I know that you're getting a bit frustrated that because it was um because of the delay but um i hope you'll catch this if you're not watching now i hope you'll catch this on youtube sometime today or tomorrow or something but anyways yeah thank you so much enjoy the rest of your weekend and like i always say love music love life and love 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 drummers because if you, you've seen alan curry there is so amazing and so funny so um bye everyone see you all next week bye